Hi guys, welcome to Crypto Insight. In these videos, I give you a rundown of what's happening in large cap crypto, and in particular, the options and volatility space. I started trading crypto options in 2020, after spending 20 years trading equity derivatives professionally. It's been a lot of fun trading the massive volatility in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I can tell you as a vol trader, the markets with the most opportunity to make money are those that know how to move. I will give you the insight of my trading and experience and how I'm reading the options market flows and positioning my own book to trade the opportunities in the space. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you like these videos and hit the notification bell to see these weekly videos as they are released. Thanks a lot and enjoy the video. So here's the crypto, here's the Bitcoin chart, right? So what's been going on in crypto this week? Um, so obviously the big resistance was 52 that we were talking about. Um, and it kind of did manage to push out, uh, you know, push its head above that, but very briefly, and then it's pulled back. So it's kind of struggling to break 52 in any, any kind of convincing manner. Um, but, you know, it still has been grinding its way higher and, you know, making lower, making higher lows. So I would say that, the new support zone is probably in that 46 to 49 area uh, where we're basically got the lower end of the Bollinger. We've got the average in between that zone there. Um, so that's pretty constructive still, I would say, in terms of just pure technicals on Bitcoin. The, more, the much more interesting asset has been uh, Ethereum, which, you know, we had been calling for the break of 34 to, to kind of propel us to 4,000. We literally touched just above 4,000 and that's pulled back now, right? So that was a pretty accurate prediction, <laughs> probably more accurate than I would have expected. Um, but basically, uh, what can you sort of put this down to, right? So you've had, I mean, the NFT volume explosion is unbelievable. Um, OpenSea had a $3 billion month, uh, which is, you know, staggering, I would say. Apparently eBay's volume is only seven and a half billion, right? So. OpenSea, the NFT marketplace, is you know nearly half the volume that's trading um, in in eBay, which is unbelievable, right? Um, you've also had a positive uh, narrative coming out of the Arbitrum, um, which is the layer two solution for Ethereum. So obviously the critics of Ethereum are saying that you know it's not scalable, the transaction volumes you can't do what you need to. Um, and and, and they, they, they're trying to address that problem. And, and these guys at Arbitrum have raised quite a bit of capital to try and build on that and kind of help with that process of scaling. So even though you're going to, in theory, get a bunch of scaling coming out of 2.0, but that's quite far away, um, you've got other potential solutions there in the pipeline, right? So I think there's some positivity around that. Um, and then, you know, obviously you got the technical break higher, right? 34 was that big level. We took it out. And like I was saying, you know, the reason I kind of come up with that target on 4,000 was just, uh, obviously it's a psychological level, but, you know, looking at the Bitcoin and um, versus Ethereum versus Bitcoin spread, 0.08 was a bit of a target on that as well, right? And we pretty much touched that and pulled back straight off it. So those levels seem to be being quite well respected for now. Um, so, you know, that, that gives me reason to continue to kind of look at these charts in the same sort of way because they're proving to be quite a good guide, right? Um, so in terms of other headlines, um, you know, you've had Solana and Cardano absolutely exploding over the last few weeks, um, particularly Solana. Um, and that's those are alternative layer one solutions, um, which are basically, you know, trying to compete uh, with Ethereum for market share, right? In terms of the smart contracts space, right? And, you know, it, the whole NFT thing, right? You know, you can do NFTs rather than just using Ethereum that people are trying to push to using NFTs using the platform of Solana or, or Cardano, basically, right? So that's the idea there. Whether or not it happens remains to be seen. 
um, in a big way, but people are saying decentralization is the problem there, right? So you don't have the same level of security or decentralization that you do in Ethereum in these other protocols. That's the critique of them anyway, right? So, you know, the market obviously is going to decide. And right now, Solana has been flying. Yeah. Um, other headlines. Um, so you, obviously the NFT explosion we talked about, but it's kind of moving on, right? So rather than just being JPEGs and, and artwork, digital artwork, which is driving this kind of boom in NFTs, it's kind of moving, it's changing shape a little bit, right? So you're getting, um, you're getting these other things that are popping up like um, Loot for Adventurers came out, which is basically, the, it's, it's, it's all about the metaverse, right? And, and the ability to sort of build within the metaverse. So rather than just having artwork that you can't really do much with, people are now releasing NFTs that are actually functional and can help build some you know fantasy games and things like that like axie infinity apparently has had massive explosion as well because of uh, all of the you know get paid to play the game type stuff that's been happening right but basically the I, the way i kind of distill it or understand it is that the these things are evolving and they're changing in nature and they're becoming more like building blocks for something else rather than just like pieces of art or collectibles in their own right so i think as you're seeing NFTs change their form like that, that is arguably going to give more longevity to this NFT boom, basically, right? If it was just a bunch of collectibles that people were paying the wrong price for, that would be one thing, right? But people are now actually using them as building blocks to, to build stuff, right? And you've got this massive crypto community that's embracing this idea, and, and, and that's really fueling the boom. So it's just pretty mind-boggling stuff. But that's kind of how I'm seeing it and how I'm understanding it right now. I'm by no means an expert, but the things I'm seeing suggest to me this might not be as much of a flash in the pan as some people think it is. That doesn't mean it's not a bit overvalued in the short term, but you could say that about the Ethereum price too, right? It's touched 4,000, it's pulling back. Um, but I will talk a bit about my sort of outlook for that and how I'm trading that. But in general, a lot of positive things coming out on the NFTs, right? And at the same time, you're seeing DeFi pulling back a bit, right? You're seeing DeFi coming under a bit more regulatory scrutiny, along with like the stable coins and stuff. So people are kind of moving a bit away from DeFi focus and going into the NFTs right now. And that's sucking in a whole load of new entrants into the crypto market from music, from uh, Hollywood, from um, art, fashion, all those people, which is, you know, I think in general, quite positive for adoption, as I've stated before, right? And then the final headline to be excited about is FTX exchange buying Ledger X, right? Which is obviously an options exchange in the US. Um, that was the only one that you could really use as a US um, domicile person. Uh, liquidity was a bit rubbish, but this is paving the way for, you know, much better liquidity on that, on that platform. Derivatives volumes can, will probably go up significantly with the help of FTX. Uh, and then in general, just like crypto MA, right? This is like a sign that we might start to see more crypto MA, which in general will be good for sentiment in the space, basically, right? So all of those relatively positive headlines from what I'm seeing. Yeah. So uh, the on chain stuff, right? This week. So a few interesting graphs on the on chain stuff. Um, now, the, obviously, the hash rate has recovered quite a bit, as we know. We've already shown that before in previous episodes. Um, so what are we looking at in terms of minor revenues? Right? So this is quite an interesting chart, right? So minor revenues are basically showing you the profitability of mining this stuff. And um, so quite a few lines on this chart. So let me try and explain what's going on, okay? So the Bitcoin income per hash. So what does that mean? So that... As, as more and more competition enters the mining space, you, you, you basically get less, you get less Bitcoin for your efforts, okay? And also, as you go through these cyclical halvings, that's just a kind of functional thing that you're just going to get less Bitcoin for your efforts, right? So, so that orange line is trending down, and that's kind of going to be like that forever, pretty much, right? Um, 
But if you look at the dollar value of the of the income that you get from mining, that fluctuates, right? Because the dollar price of Bitcoin is fluctuating, right? So the green line represents the, the dollar income for mining Bitcoin, right? And that has actually recovered really, really nicely, right? So you obviously had, you had a move down in May, but you've had a good bounce and you're back up to kind of July 19 levels, okay? So pretty decent environment to be mining, pretty profitable to be mining basically, right? So all that does, that doesn't necessarily tell us the price is gonna keep going up in Bitcoin, but it gives us a feeling of the robustness of that network, right? That, you know, things are, you have confidence in that basically, right? So, so that's how I would read that basically. Um, then, you know, now the fact that it's profitable to mine Bitcoin means that these miners are making money, okay? And what are they doing? They're accumulating Bitcoin as they mine. So then the next obvious question is, well, what are they doing with that Bitcoin? Are they holding it or are they selling it? Yeah. Uh, and that, that would be where this graph comes in, which shows us uh, minor net position changing, net position change, right? So this graph goes back to 2019. Uh, basically, when it's in the green, it's showing you that miners are accumulating. When it's in the red, it's showing you that miners on net net miners are getting rid of Bitcoin. And right now it's kind of rolled from green down to about neutral, right? So right now it's in a neutral position, which shows us that there has been some de-risking where you are you know, seeing some people lighten up on the amount of Bitcoin that they have, right? But that's not necessarily super bearish. That's just, you know, that's just inventory management. And, you know, some of these guys might actually be even looking to expand and you know their mining operation and they just need some capital to go ahead and do that basically right and the good thing is in the face of this green on this green bars coming down when you're seeing price going nowhere or even higher that means that that supply that's hitting the market is being met with strong enough demand that it's not negatively impacting price so if anything that's showing you that there's some nice strong underlying demand for btc in the face of some minor selling basically okay um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing there. Um, another interesting thing is what's going on in the futures market, right? So both Bitcoin and Ethereum futures have gone, it, open interest has gone up a lot. Ethereum is probably the most interesting because it's at all time highs. So this kind of shows us um, across all the exchanges, Ethereum open interest in futures at all time highs at around 7.8 billion, okay? So that's what that means. More people are kind of playing the space via leverage, via futures. Basically, a sign that increased speculation and potentially more fragility building in the system. Something to be careful of. Okay. Um, and then another way of sort of checking that is to look at the funding rates for those futures. Okay. So if I bring up Bitcoin funding rate on this chart, that kind of shows us. That is positive. So it's at about three basis points. Um, you're basically paying three basis points to be long perpetual futures. Um, now, you know, that has got as high as, you know, close to 10 basis points uh, historically, if we go back to kind of uh, January, March time. But if you look at where that was before the May puke, the May sell off, that was pretty much around here, around three basis points. So that's not to say that we're scaremongering and saying, oh, well, a crash is coming. It's just something to be aware of that leverage is building back into the system. People are getting a bit more excited about using futures to be long and they're willing to pay for it. No major surprise, right? We consolidated down at 30K. We flushed out all of the people who didn't believe in the rally. We're now going, we're now breaking 50K to the upside. And some people think we're going to hit 100K by year end. So it shouldn't be surprising to see speculative positioning in futures coming back. But this is one of those things that is usually a precursor to a, some sort of liquidation event. So let's keep an eye on it. If we do get an explosion higher in price that really takes this thing back up towards above five or t you know, closer to 10 base points, then maybe that's a red flag to start putting on some put protection or some hedges Right now, I'm not rushing out to buy hedges on Bitcoin, um, but I'm just kind of being cautious, not getting overly exposed and buying loads of calls necessarily. Um, and we'll look at the vol space and we'll tell you what that's telling us. But right now, showing some potential speculative 
um, excess starting to come back into the system. That's that's how I read that stuff. Okay. So where are we on um, vol? So the first thing to kind of look at is what's realized vol been doing, right? So if we bring it, if we go back a couple of weeks, kind of see what's going on here. Uh, to realize vol has kind of ground down to about 40, uh, if we look at the seven day and around 50 on the 30 day, right? So steady kind of decrease in realized vol on Bitcoin, right? And that's, you can see that, right? As we, as we smashed up towards 50K, we've kind of been chopping around, but not really moving too dramatically, okay? So in line with that, as you'd expect, implied vols coming down, right? So we've got, you've got one week, one month, three months, Three month has actually been flatlining, right? So three month vol not really getting dragged down. We realize that's still parked there up at 90 vol, pretty high. But you're seeing shorter day implies coming down where you've got one week stuff at 70. You've got the one month stuff at 80, right? So for, on the back of that, you can see that that the demand for the longer dated stuff is holding up that back end, but you're getting the term structure going to a steep contango basically, right? So if we compare that to a week ago, if I expand this, you can see it a bit more clearly. The green is where we are today. Um, the brown is where we were a week ago. So you're seeing the shorter dated expiries dropping in line with realized, seeing the longer dated expiries holding their value because as we march higher, the, the, way, the place that people want to hold their call options is in the longer dated expiries because that decay isn't too heavy, basically, right? Um, so that's kind of how that's working out. So that can tango pretty steep um and then the last thing to be aware of is you know uh what's been going on with skew right well before i mention skew actually the fact that contango has collapsed and the front end is trading at 70 now that's about as low as we've seen the implied vol in the front right for a while so i would say if you believe that this 52 area is now being rejected or either we're going to break 52 and go straight to 56 or we're going to reject 52 and go back to the mid 40s. Arguably, that short end that's trading at 70 vol is giving you quite cheap gamma exposure. So if you're a vol trader in the crypto space, I think gamma is starting to look fairly attractive, given that we're reaching some key technical levels like this 52 area. So, you know, what I've done is I've been long some 10th of September calls and I've ridden them up to here. But after we rejected that 52 break last night, I basically threw in the towel, but rather than just selling out my options, I've just dealt to hedge them because I think the gamma might actually be quite valuable. So I'm going to trade that gamma for a couple of days and see if I can monetize some of that cheap gamma, basically, because I think that front end has kind of come off quite a lot. Yeah. And then the last thing to look at is skew. Um, you know, skew completely flipping from calls to puts over the last, you know, you had even the three month stuff, uh, which is your brown line you know a week ago you had three months skew four vols over for calls it's completely reversed it actually touched two vols over for puts but right now it's standing at pretty much zero right the shorter dated stuff is firmly three three and a half vols for calls the three month stuff is now neutral and it's only really that long end like the one year stuff uh, which is basically about three or four vols over for calls, right? So we're definitely seeing a switch, even though the market looks to be trying to break 52s, options market saying, well, we're not excited about buying short day calls. We'd rather have puts, okay? So that's they're definitely looking for protection and they're looking for a short-term pullback, basically, in terms of the options market and what we're seeing, yeah? Um, and then, you know, if you look at the volumes and the flows that we see actually seeing in the options market, then um, you've basically got, you can see clearly here in the last 24 hours. Uh, well, here. So here you see in the last 24 hours, if we go to like the 10th of September, so this week expiry or the monthly expiry in September, which is the large one, the predominant flows you can see are either put buyers, which are large red bars, so you got that large red bar there in uh, the weeklies and that very large red bar there in um, the end of September stuff versus cool sells, right? Which are these large purple bars. So cool selling and put buying is certainly 
driving the flows over the last sort of 24 hours so in what we're seeing basically okay so uh, people basically taking profit and kind of reversing engines on what we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks and that that bullish dynamic yeah um and then so that's kind of what we're seeing in the bitcoin option space in terms of ethereum uh realized vol of ethereum has been a bit different right so clearly we got that break higher and that charge up to four thousand. so Realize vol holding much, much better uh, in Ethereum. So if we look here, whereas we got down to about 40 realized on Bitcoin, which is only about 2% a day in terms of daily move. Ethereum averaging, you know, realized vol kind of in the mid 60s. Yeah, so decent amount higher there. And, and, and therefore, it makes sense that the implied should hold better as well, right? So implied vols are about 17 vols above Bitcoin vols. Um, so not collapsing quite as hard. Still seeing uh, a contango in the term structure. Um, and similar thing, right? Long end holding, front end collapsing, but just that spread between Ethereum and Bitcoin quite significant, right? Close to 20 vols because the realized has justified it. Um, now, now, the more surprising thing is like SKU, right? So SKU has also done the same thing as Bitcoin, right? So the SKU is starting to flip towards um, the puts, which arguably is somewhat surprising, right? So, you know, you had a move, you know, in the one month stuff, you went from like, again, minus four vols to the opposite, basically, right? So even though Ethereum smashed to the upside and hit 4,000, suddenly we're seeing a load of put buying interest, okay? Uh, which basically is signaling that the market feels a bit exhausted in the short term. And certainly the options players agree with that basically, right? So um, taking profit on calls, buying puts after we hit that 4,000 target, right? I agree with that sentiment. And I, and I was saying to um, obviously all my subscribers on, on the live chat last week that my target was reached. I took some profit on my September 3840 calls. I've also now taken profit on my 5,000 calls in September. So all my September calls are gone. Um, I also uh, added a trade to play a consolidation. So I did a two week trade, 17th of September, put ladder. Um, for those who don't know what a put ladder looks like, let me share the screen. So I added to that trade today as well, right? So that's, I'm playing a consolidation here, right? So you look where the market is. The market's at around 3770 right now. And I am playing, if you look at what the red, the red line represents my terminal payoff at expiry, okay? So that's in two weeks, right? On the 17th, in 10 days time. So I'm basically playing consolidation into this range here. This range being anywhere between say, you know, the 34 um, and the 36 area basically, right? That's where I think we're gonna pull back into. I think we're gonna find some support. We broke above that 34 area, which was a resistance. I think we're gonna find some support at 34 on the way back down. And so I think there's a decent chance that we, that's going to contain us over the next two weeks if we go into consolidation. And this put ladder is a nice way of expressing that view, uh, not putting too much premium down and getting some leverage to that premium if that view is right. Selling expensive volatility, but obviously taking some risk, right? So if the market was to melt down below 3,000, then that trade would sting me quite a bit. But I don't have to just sit on my hands and do nothing, right? So for now, I've entered that trade because that's my view. I'm starting to see that view play out. We've already pulled back to 38, which is my front strike. The put ladder that I've traded is the 38, 36, 3300 put ladder. We're starting to go into that zone, which is good. We just need to stick around there for a couple of weeks for me to make my money, right? And then I'll get out of it. So that's, that's how I'm playing it. If we start to accelerate to the downside and I start to get nervous because we break 3,400 and we're looking like we're really, really rolling over, like something happened back in May, then I can obviously contain my risk by buying a lower strike put, even though it's going to cost me a bit of money to do it, it'll allow me to sleep better at night, right? So I will do that and I will risk manage my position if I need to. But right here, right now, the way I've risk managed my position is I've sold some calls, I've taken profit, and I position for a bearish position, a bearish viewpoint in the short term, right? That's that's kind of what I'm looking at. And, then, and like I said, I've also hedged out some of my Bitcoin calls. So I've got some gamma there. So if the market does go a bit mental to the downside, I've got some protection there. 
And finally, I've even sold some Ethereum futures against my equity holdings to just neutralize some of my risk so I don't get myself into, into a pickle, right? Like my, I, the fact that we've been bullish Ethereum from 17, 1800 up to 4,000, I think we can thank the trading gods a little bit, take a bit of money off the table, take a bit of risk off the table. Even if we march higher, still long ultimately, but taking some money off the table and de-risking is a bit of a no-brainer here. So that's what I'm doing basically, yeah? Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel, give the video a thumbs up, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. To watch the entire macro call, which includes the live Q&A and a walkthrough of all my top trades, you can sign up for a free trial to Macro Insight. If you join our exclusive trading community, you'll get access to our Telegram group, and you'll also get weekly market reports summarizing the macro call. The link is in the description to the video. And for more information, you can connect with us on socials, or you can visit our website, options-insight.com. Thanks a lot.